The numbers don't lie. The legends don't fade. The best team in college football, the Trojans of USC. And you don't need hype with this kind of history. Now the party begins. The story is in the contrast between the heartland and the coast. The flash and the fury. The new wave and the back to basics approach. In the Coliseum, two proud traditions clash. Legacies carried on by those who lift their teams with every hit and bring back memories with every pass. They lead teams whose national title hopes may well hinge on this game. Words don't do it justice. All you need to hear are the names. Ohio State, USC, on Saturday Night Football. You are looking live at the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum, where tonight, two of college football's traditional powers meet in a highly anticipated early season showdown on Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines. Tonight, the number one USC Trojans hosting the number five Ohio State Buckeyes in their first matchup since 1990. And when they bury the sword, game on in L.A. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brett Musburger. You know, it is hard to believe that it has been 18 long years since Ohio State and USC have played a football game. In fact, back in the era of Woody Hayes, it seemed like these two schools played every year in the Rose Bowl. And in fact, they did meet four times in that bowl between 1969 and 1975. So it is indeed a pleasure here tonight to have USC and Ohio State move back to center stage. And it's always a pleasure for me to welcome my partner, Kirk Herbstreit. Been working overtime. You saw Beanie Wells won't play tonight. So how do the Buckeyes pick up the slack? Kirk? Well, I think the big thing that they have to do is now rely on some running backs that have not been in this kind of environment, especially Boom Heron, number one. He's going to get an opportunity to see what he can do in running the football. Brandon saying a sophomore also has to step up. But more importantly, Jim Trestle has to break tendencies to have any chance of moving the football against this USC defense. Talented freshman quarterback Terrell Pryor. Does he figure it all tonight? Well, I just talked to Coach Trestle on the field. This is breaking news. It's been speculated. Now we know. Terrell Pryor will be heavily involved in tonight's game plan for Ohio State. In fact, the very first series looked for number two to be inserted. Now he's not going to be asked to take the series and drive 80 yards down the field. Tonight they're going to look to insert him within a series to take the weight of the world off of his shoulders to see how he'll do. And if he performs well, he will play throughout the entire game. Tough spot. This is a great USC football team. I think when the dust settles, this could be Pete Carroll's most talented team and the deepest team that he has. Offensively, the firepower is there. Mark Sanchez gives them that at quarterback, and they always have skill. Defensively, wait till you see this team. They fly around, and they're going to put a lot of pressure on Ohio State. 94,000. About 20 minutes past 5 o'clock along the Pacific Coast. There'll be a little bit of sunshine here during the next 30 minutes or so, and then it'll dissolve to the west. Eighth year as head coach, just the same as Jim Trussell. So much history between Ohio State, USC, the national championships. 18 between them, 11 for the Trojans. And when it comes to hardware, seven Heismans apiece. Rose Bowl wins, 23 for USC and six for the Buckeyes. Jim Trussell's with Aaron now, so let's go back down to Aaron. Well, Coach Beanie Wells not playing tonight. What was the 
keeping him out of the game? Well, it's the best thing for him and his health, and that's what we're in this for, for the young people. And, you know, he might not speak to me ever again, but uh, he'll be here doing all he can. You mentioned a Kirk Herbstreit. We're going to see quarterback Terrell Pryor early tonight. What gives you so much confidence a freshman can handle an environment like this? Well, you know, Terrell's a competitor, and how much we see him, we're not sure, but we're going to get him in there and get his feet wet. All right, Coach, thanks. Let's send it over to Lisa Salters. Thanks, Aaron. Pete, with all the drama, is Beanie Wells playing, not playing? What impact has that had on your preparation this week? Well, we prepared like he was going to play. The fact that he didn't just like this didn't put him in the game, so we're not worried about it at all. All right, and Terrell Pryor, their backup. He's not the starter yet. You plan to see him. How do you game plan for a situation like well, that? Well, he's much different. You know, he's a runner, and so we have to take care of that first. Uh, we'll have to see, you know, how much they want to play him, but we're ready for it. All right, thanks a lot. Coach. All right, Lisa. Well, you go back, and again, it's been 18 years since these two schools have met each other. Trojans lead it overall, having won the last five games. And the last Ohio State win was back in the 1974 Rose Bowl. They've played seven times in nearby Pasadena, and the Trojans lead it by one. The song girls are ready for this evening. David Beeler putting the ball on the tee at the 30 yard line. Brandon Sane and Boom Heron are back deep. So there you see two of the Buckeyes. Boom is there on the right, number one. Two of the runners were going to be seen. As Kirk Herb Street told us, they'll use all three. They'll see what they've got at running back behind a big, talented offensive line coming off a of poor performance last week against Ohio. Here comes Heron from the goal line. Well short of the 20 yard line down at the 11 yard line. The special team coverage and here comes Todd Beckman. Kirk. Well Todd Beckman is senior. He brings a great deal of maturity to the position. Of course we talked about Terrell Pryor will be eventually inserted but Todd Beckman is the leader of the offense especially with Beanie Wells down. They need to look to number 17 tonight as a guy who knows that he's going to make good decisions with the football but look for Ohio State Brent no matter who the quarterback is to spread this USC defense out and try to throw the football to set up the run. Heron is the opening tailback. Gets the first carry of the game a couple of yards into the heart. Ellison, the uh, safety, coming up. And uh, talk to us about these running backs now, Kirk. Well, Maurice Wells has been around. He's kind of a steady running back for Ohio State. But I think you're going to see more of number one, Boom Heron, who is just in the lineup there to start this game, electrifying back with great speed. And Brandon Sane has the fastest 100-meter sprint in the history of the state of Ohio as a high school track star. So there's a great deal of speed with Sane and, of course, with Dan Heron, Boom Heron in the backfield. Sansenbacher brings the play in. He's number 12 going toward the top of your screen. They overload three wide receivers, put Beckman back in the gun. Let's see if pressure gets there. Slips it out to the right flat. That is Ray Small. And it presents the first third down of this game as Ray Mawaluga comes up with his first tackle. And see, that's what Ohio State is going to have to do, even though it didn't work there. Coming out on second down, four wide receivers inserted into the lineup, just trying to spread out the speed and the creativity of Pete Carroll's SC defense. Trojans show pressure, and they bring it. Well short. It's three and out. Ellison making another stop as the pressure closed in. SC came on the blitz with the two linebackers, but Kevin Ellison, as much as we'll talk tonight about Taylor Mays, the free safety, the leader in the back is number four, Kevin Ellison, close to the line of scrimmage as Heron. It looked like he might squeeze through a seam, but Ellison makes a nice play to set up the punt. So here is Trapasso, the punter, but the big thing is McKnight is the return man for the Trojans, and he is standing at the USC 43-yard line. He's the most dangerous all-purpose back on this Trojan team. Did not signal fair catch. And now he is out of bounds. A very dangerous grab there with Chekwa closing in, the defensive back on top of him. And now... 
We'll see Mark Sanchez, Kirk, in uh, his uh, biggest start ever. Well, he has waited for this game and this kind of opportunity his entire life growing up in Southern California. Had to pay his dues sitting back behind John David Booty and Matt Leiner before that. But he has been patient, and now he steps under center in a game that can put him on the map as a USC quarterback. C.J. Gable opens as the tailback. He's out empty backfield against the four man Buckeye rush incomplete on the first pass. How about the impact players for the Trojans offense Kirk? Well as we were looking at this it's very hard to pick three but we're going to start with Joe McKnight because they have so many Joe McKnight you're going to see him moved around the entire lineup to try to find one on one opportunities. Damian Williams the transfer from Arkansas number 18 has elevated the entire wide receiver group and Ronald Johnson out of Michigan probably excited to go up against the Buckeyes tonight has really matured and gives the SC offense a deep threat downfield. McKnight checks back in the backfield and he is tripped up. And that was Malcolm Jenkins, a first round draft choice for sure, come next April. And, and if Ohio State's going to stay in this game early, this is exactly what they need is for their defense to make plays. Malcolm Jenkins unblocked, showing some pretty good acceleration in his own right as McKnight had some room to run. But look how quick Malcolm Jenkins comes down to make the play there for Ohio State's defense. First third down for the Trojans. Sanchez back in the gun. McKnight comes out of the backfield they throw short incomplete and it is three and out both teams kind of feeling each other out here both three and out two great defenses tonight they're going to play some football SC deciding to go with the screen realizing that Ohio State may be bring pressure but the rhythm just not there as you have an offensive lineman Heber downfield getting in the way there of McKnight Wojnick and two return men back deep now the Buckeyes are going to let this one roll dead and it'll take a Trojan hop at the 18 yard line. So the Bucks will be coming out with their second possession of the evening here in the Los Angeles Coliseum on a beautiful night for a football game. Maurice Wells play fake to him Beckman rolling right throws high caught. And reaching for the first down is Brian Hartline. So that is the second first down for the Buckeyes. We're starting to move the ball on this USCD. What's well, interesting here, bootleg, and again, Jim Tressel breaking tendencies and just showing a variety of things. The bootleg, I want you to look and see right here how many different receivers that Todd Beckman has open. He has a choice of three different receivers trying to change the tendencies of eight months worth of film study right now as a play caller is what Jim Tressel's trying to do. Quarterbacks in and out. Here comes Pryor to throw his first pass, and it is complete for another first down to Dane Sansenbacher. Tell you what, so much for thinking when two comes in, look out for the quarterback keeper. Right here early in this game, you're seeing Terrell Pryor showing the ability to throw the football downfield and the confidence that Jim Tressel has in him to put him out in the corner with an easy read, a simple throw to get his feet settled, get him underneath himself, allow him to go out and play. Todd Beckman comes back into the lineup. Trojans with a five-man rush. Press Heron on the run, and he backs his way for a nice gain, a terrific effort by Boom Heron. Buckeyes driving the ball inside the 30. Young Parr on a quarterback draw, very elusive. Slips the first tackle, and he's down to the 25-yard line. What, what, Brent, what is happening here right now for young Terrell Pryor is he's starting to settle in, and he's starting to just play football. He's forgetting where he is, and he's just starting to get more and more relaxed with each snap that he takes, you can almost see it in his eyes, a little bit of a swagger as he goes back to the sideline, getting ready for his next play. Second and six, and the Bucks are driving the ball on this very deep, talented Trojan defense. Here comes Heron, looking for another first down, ran into his own man and still got it. 
Kirk, I believe you're right. That man's got a little bit of flash. Yep. I think it, for those of you who've not seen Boom Heron, that's what he brings is an ex he has the explosiveness for a, a, a undersized running back at about 5'10", about 195 pounds, runs with a great deal of passion and has the acceleration to be on this field tonight with this USC defense. First team into the red zone from the 20 yard line. Beckman under center on the sneak. Would it be something if the Buckeyes got on the scoreboard it, first? It reminds me of Steve Spurrier back when he was at Florida, rotating quarterbacks every play. Ohio State, every play you're seeing a different quarterback, and yet the rhythm of the offense and the rhythm of the drive is not being affected at all. In fact, it's being enhanced with these two quarterbacks playing on alternate plays. Four-man rush, complete. Just inside the 20 yard line, a little biscuit. USC giving a cushion to the outside receivers, and we've seen two or three times now in this drive where they, they've given both Todd Beckman and Terrell Pryor an opportunity to just throw an easy throw. Quick five or six yards, moving the chains, trying to move the ball right down the field. Now it's about executing. Once you get inside the red zone, can you punch it in for a touchdown? He leaves Beckman on the field for this second and ten. Apparently going to try to take it downfield a little bit. No, sir. They're going to hand it off to Boom Heron, but the Trojans were ready. This will present Ohio State with a third and long. Cushing and Mawaluga, we'll hear those names all night long. Number 10 for the Trojans is Cushing, and of course, number 58, Mawaluga. Hard to find a football game matching any two teams in college football this year where you would have four better linebackers than these two teams present. So here's your third down. 13th play of this long drive, keeping the ball out of USC's hands. Beckman back. Going to throw that middle screen. There's a penalty flag. Heron crossed the first down line on your screen, but there is a penalty flag. There's no foul on the play. And that Four is a first and goal. Well, yeah, what was called is a, an illegal man downfield, but the call the ball is caught behind the line of scrimmage. And I think that's what confused the official is was the ball caught behind the line or beyond the line? And boom, Heron was two or three yards short of the line of scrimmage. And that's why I was surprised to see a flag and thought maybe it was something else, but a good no call there by the officials to pick up the flag. USC has to be aware of this young man now. Standing back there where he can run the quarterback draw, roll it out, first down and goal. Here's the draw play, and the Trojans were ready for it. They throw him for a loss back to the 10 yard line. Mayaba. Kulika Mayaba, the senior from Hawaii, number 43, said, We're not going to be fooled on that. You, Ohio State spread the entire USC defense outside of the box area, the area between the two tackles, but you saw the speed, the closing speed of the two USC linebackers coming in. That's why tonight you're going to have to see more and more from Terrell Pryor other than just running the football, which, again, we've seen on this drive. See if Jake Ballard, the tight end for the Buckeyes, gets into this pass pattern. He's on the right side of the down line. Beckman in trouble. Another loss. An ugly looking broken play. Moala. What we're seeing again is you see Todd Beckman in your peak here and you're thinking, okay, he's going to hand it off. He's going to throw a screen. He's going to throw the football. It's the second time on this series we've seen option football out of the shotgun from Todd Beckman trying to give a different look. So SC's defense is not having an indicator based on who the quarterback is and what play might be coming up. It's a tough, uh, tough down to execute against this USC defense here. And that's exactly what they're setting up. Heron goes to the middle of the field and the field goal unit will come out. We have three minutes, a little over three minutes to go in the first quarter. USC has had the ball for 55 seconds in this first quarter. Interesting. 
Ohio State's best off best defense so far has been their own offense. That's one way to slow down Mark Sanchez and all the great athletes that USC has on their offense is to keep them on the sideline. Exactly. Pretorius is going to attempt a 29 yard field goal. So Ohio State with its second possession strikes first with a field goal. And they lead favored USC 3 nothing. You're watching Saturday Night Football on ABC. Ball is on the tee at the 30 yard line and the kickoff man is Aaron Petrie. So Pretorius kicked the field goal. And there you see the deep men for USC. Ron Johnson is number eight and CJ Gable is number two. Johnson a wide receiver and Gable a tailback. USC's had the ball for only three plays in this game. If you joined us late, 306 to go. Time consuming drive for a field goal. Put the Buckeyes ahead. They kick it off again, and Gable has got it at the eight yard line. To the 25 yard line, thereabouts, it'll be spotted as the Buckeye kickoff team comes down. Well, Mark Sanchez has not completed a pass. He's going to try on the roll to see what he can do, and he hits Williams. And uh, for Sanchez, you know the time is now, and he says he's ready for the big game. This is exactly what I signed up for. This is what Coach Carroll promised, you know. I mean, that's the only promise he'll give you during recruiting is that the games are going to be unbelievable. And uh, now it's my shot. You know, I don't want to make too much out of it. I want it to be a game. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to be very excited, and I'll take a second right before it starts to kind of soak it all in, look around, and all right, get back to my focus. So uh, I can't wait for it to happen, and, and I'll be smiling. It's going to be great. His first completion tonight was to Damian Williams, the transfer from Arkansas. That's McKnight dancing from the tailback spot, first town, and that's the Trojans. First first down of the night. Moved it pretty smoothly. The different wrinkle there was Sanchez on the boot to the right. Tends to be a little more mobile than what they've had at quarterback the last few years, so I think we'll see Sanchez pull out just like you did on that one completion. Yeah, and running the football is the key to be able to set up the play-action game of USC's. I think it's probably the best play-action game in the country over the years with Carson Palmer and Matt Leinart, John David Booty, but it's all predicated upon USC's ability to run the football, then they can start to spread things around. Now they brought him to wideout. You saw him sprint out of the huddle, so this will be a direct snap. McKnight juggles it runs right straight ahead here's the Trojan another first and ten so what McFadden popular popularized down at Arkansas Kirk so many schools are now using the direct snap to running backs Pete Carroll says all right if you're going to play the young freshman I'm going to put my young sophomore in the lineup and we're going to be able to show the ability to do the same thing one thing he has is such quickness and Steve Sarkeesian is the offensive coordinator very very creative and very aggressive with his play calling Gable is the running back behind Sanchez Williams is in motion Sanchez looks downfield throws in underneath slipping the running back out as the wide receiver that time so CJ Gable with the catch and, and that's the beauty of being a quarterback at USC. And one of the things that Mark Sanchez said he really wanted to work on this year is he has such confidence in his receivers and his arm that if it's not there, instead of taking a chance downfield, he knows he has to be willing to find his outlet and just check down. Because think about who you're throwing the football to. Joe McKnight, C.J. Gable, Stephon Johnson. Those guys in open space can make a lot of people miss. Blake Ailes, the talented young freshman. That's the tight end in motion. Sanchez is looking downfield, throws sideline incomplete. Chequa was the defender on that side, and Patrick Turner was the target. Ohio State brought pressure this time with their sophomore linebacker, Ross Holman. He got enough pressure and got in the face of Mark Sanchez. He goes right by Havili. Gets in there, actually, C.J. Gable, he gets in there, and I think it forced Mark Sanchez to throw the football just a little bit before he wanted to to find his open receiver there, Patrick Turner. Third and four for Sanchez and the Trojans. 
Going to throw for it. There's a penalty flag short of the first down, but there is a penalty flag. Jenkins with the coverage on Patrick Turner. Defense, Defense. Offside. offside. Line up in neutral zone. The penalty's declined. First down. Now we've seen both defenses jumping. A little antsy, a little antsy down there, especially on third down, which is so important to have that first step being so quick. Try to penetrate the offensive line. They've not gotten the football yet to Damian Williams, who's at the bottom of the screen, number 18, and I know they'd like to. Yeah, they hit him with that one earlier pass. He comes in off the corner. They go deep. They got a man open. Stanley Havili takes it to the house for the game's first touchdown. He dropped one two weeks ago against Virginia. But he is a preferred target, and he was a year ago with John David Booty, and here tonight with Sanchez. He definitely is able to hold on to this, keep his balance, and take it into the end zone for USC. And Stanley Havili gives USC that threat where they can sneak him out one-on-one -on -one against a linebacker and into the end zone. So, Kirk, the Trojans, with their... Fine march down the field. They don't settle for a field goal. They score a touchdown and lead it 7-3. The Los Angeles Coliseum and this aerial coverage for tonight's game, courtesy of the Outback Steakhouse Airship, Bloomin' Onion One. The Bloomin' Onion One Airship, fan favorite every week on ABC ESPN College Football Broadcast. They've got a grand scene up there tonight. Heron goes back into the end zone, and Sane says, take a knee, and it'll come out on the 20 yard line. Let's go to the replays, Kirk. You see Stanley Havili move to the outside right here. And what he has working for him here is he's got his tight end working one-on-one -on -one to the post. That draws the corner, Malcolm Jenkins. It confuses him, and he's one-on-one -on -one right down the sideline with the linebacker, Marcus Freeman. The ball is well thrown downfield and allows him to run underneath it for a touchdown. I love the way they move Stanley Havili around because he has so such great hands as a fullback. They look for those one-on-one -on -one opportunities. Todd Beckman is the Ohio State quarterback starting this drive. Heron for a couple of yards, and it'll be second down and eight, and Pryor stays on the sideline this time. Very impressive the way USC answered after Ohio State controlled the ball, drove down the length of the field, and came up with three points. Mark Sanchez and USC come right back and put a touchdown up on the board. They'll let the final seconds of the first quarter tick away. So the Buckeyes had the ball twice earlier, settled for a field goal. The Trojans, the second time they touched it, score a touchdown. Saturday Night Football, presented by Southwest Airlines, returns after this message of work from our ABC station. Six o'clock along the Pacific Network with Kirk Herbstreet. I'm Brett Musburger. USC leading Ohio State, 7-3. Throw in underneath, short of the first down, and it's Boom Heron, the running back, running the circle route, and Brian Cushing, number 10, the linebacker there, Kirk. What USC is trying to do right now when Todd Beckman comes into the game, I think they feel more of a threat from Ohio State's passing game and their group of receivers. And what they're doing is they're keeping two of their defensive backs, the safeties, back, preventing the ball being thrown downfield and forcing Beckman to dump it underneath, and then they're swarming to make an easy tackle in front of them. Nick Holt, the defensive coordinator, sets the Trojan D for this third and six. Fake the inside shuttle, throws high and complete. Buckeyes will punt it. They've had some success with that counter out of the shotgun coming back to Boom Heron because USC's defense moves so quickly. It's a little counter play. A lot of times they've handed it off. This time play action. Brian Cushing lowers to Boom right there on Todd Beckman, but still gets a catchable ball thrown to Brian Hartline. But Josh Pinkert stride for stride there and able to knock the ball away. McKnight back again.
So it goes out. We welcome you back to Los Angeles as we take a look at the Pacific Life game summary. The Trojans, of course, leading it uh, with that fine second drive, even though they've only possessed it 328. On the line of scrimmage, a handoff by Sanchez now to McKnight. And McKnight picks his way and then battles his way for still another. Now let's uh, see what's been going on in the sidelines. We begin with USC and Lisa Salters. Lisa? Well, Brent, Brendan Carroll, Pete Carroll's son, the tight ends coach, wanting to keep his offense fired up after that last touchdown. He went over to the office and said, there is no ceiling in this game. We're going to try to score 100 points if we can because they can't stop us. Now for more on Ohio State, let's go over to Aaron. Lisa, the Buckeyes over here on their sideline are very, very calm. You know, the one interesting thing is every time Terrell Pryor gets on the field, the entire team gets up off the bench and goes over to watch them. They all start kind of high-fiving each other every time he does something. Guys, he will not sit down when he's on this sideline. Todd Backman over on the side with the receivers. Terrell Pryor all over the place, Brent. Williams is going to limp back over to that sideline, going down for the Trojans when he was running his pattern. Uh, he slips, so obviously Lisa's got someone headed her way. Uh, he's going to receive a little medical attention over there, Kirk. I find that interesting when Aaron Andrews just reporting and then the camera is showing it for a true freshman playing on the road for the first time. Not only have we seen him play pretty well on the field, but he's over on the sideline being a leader, offense or defense. This guy's a competitor. Third down and six. Johnson comes in motion, and there's the Turner, and Turner to midfield, and a Trojan first down. This, in many ways, is a very, very important series for the Ohio State defense. They gave way on that last drive. Hey, this time they're going to come with a blitz with Freeman and Laronitis, and you see Mark Sanchez has enough time there to go right where they were leaving. The area that they were able to vacate opened it up there, and it's about, again, spacing and finding an opportunity there to get the football to a playmaker. On that quick count, here comes McKnight. McKnight in a foot race and the talented one from Louisiana is thrown out by Anderson Russell but the Trojans are threatening again with their outside speed a 24 yard gain. And they can attack you in so many different ways. This is a zone play and it's about having patience vision and then a burst. That looked like a little face mask there at the end but look at the burst here by McKnight. Great block downfield by the receiver Turner. Joe McKnight, every time he touches a football, you hold your breath, wondering if he's going to take it the distance. Ten yards an average, isn't too bad. Had a 200-yard all-purpose game against Illinois in the Rose Bowl. First down and ten. Havili to pass block. Sanchez stands deep, has all the time in the world. Now Havili slips out as a safety valve, and Havili is to the 14-yard line for another first and 10. He was pass blocking. There was all the time in the world. There is a penalty flag, however, and let's see what happens. That is roughing the passer. On the defense. Lawrence Wilson. From the end of the play. First down. So a big penalty here on number 87. What great patience by Mark Sanchez. And how about this? Everybody talks about USC with an inexperienced offensive line. There's about six or seven seconds. And then once he dumps it to Havili, look at the lineman trying to get downfield to pick up a block. This is not a design screen. This is just, hey, find my outlet and look at the lineman trying to help out Havili getting downfield to pick up a block. C.J. Gable, number two there, checks into the backfield. The number one team in the country. Two weeks ago, they routed Virginia. And here tonight, driving again on the Buckeyes after trailing by a field goal. Sanchez changes the play. Here's Cable picking his way, headed in zone, and stopped a couple yards shy of it. Laurinaitis and Gable very tough to bring down. Kept moving that pile at the end. 
This will be second down and goal for the Trojans. Joe McKnight receives most of the attention when you think about USC's talented group of running backs. But watch how quick and watch the footwork here of Gable. There's two white jerseys. He gives him a little shake and cuts it back to the inside towards the All-American James Laranitis. But it's that quickness and vision on the inside there that I think makes C.J. Gable probably the best all-around back the Trojans have. Stephon Johnson is now the tailback, and they use the fullback fake. Sanchez touchdown up over the top to Blake Ailes, the talented freshman from Orange, California. He is 6'5", and what a future he has as a Trojan tight end. You all remember Fred Davis. Real coming up the road now is that young man right there. See the smile by Steve Sarkeesian, offensive coordinator with his quarterback. What a call to go play action there and find an open target behind the safeties and behind the linebackers. Beeler tacks it on. So a little bit uneasy early, but now coach is right back in the thick of things, and he loved this play. Sarkeesian worked on this several times this week. A 15-yard penalty on that extra point a personal foul call against the Trojans and now they will kick it off from the 15 and it moves the deep men for the Buckeyes up to their own 15. So this could be a break for them as they trail it now 14 to 3 here. Sane and Heron are back deep and Beeler's ready. Beautiful kickoff. Sane juggles it, drops it, picks it up at the 12. So after that 15-yard penalty, they get no further than the 23. So small, split out wide now. Buckeyes looking for a big play. Pryor is the trigger man. Hands it off, and Heron running away has got a big gain. 11 yards, and... Uh, We talked about Small and uh, the comment that he had <laughs> here at Ohio State. They teach you to be a better man. Made a recruiting trip here, and he said, "There, it's just all about football." And he's finding out it's just how much football it's all about out here. Well, in the, uh, all I can tell you is both coaches do a great job of winning football games, and you and I know these guys both very well. Both do it different ways, but both do a great job of raising young men within their program as well. Trojans show a blitz. And Beckman goes down again. Incomplete pass, and to the ground he goes. They're bringing the heat on number 17, Cushing. It's going to be interesting to see as this game goes on. When Terrell Pryor's in the game, you really sense that Ohio State has more rhythm. And he has shown the ability to throw the football. And I think Pete Carroll's doing a great job of zeroing in when Todd Beckman is back there taking the snaps. Pryor comes back here again on second and ten. So Josh Pinkard is again in at that right corner. And Wright has been off the field a couple of times. Pinkard moves up on the line of scrimmage toward the top of your screen. Here comes Pryor keeping it. And coming down, and uh, Lisa, what is the uh, situation regarding a right? Well, Brent, this story really shook out yesterday, late afternoon. Uh, the incident was over the weekend. It's being described as a party that got out of hand. Sharice Wright was at that party. Four people were arrested at that time, and at the time, Wright was only detained. But police said that they were going to continue to investigate, and throughout the course of that investigation, they ultimately decided to arrest Sharice Wright, and he has been charged with felony resisting a police officer. Pete Carroll has not talked about it. He said he'll talk about it after the Malaluga for the end zone. Touchdown, Trojans. With Dick Butkus watching here tonight, Malaluga. Stakes his claim to being a finalist for the Butkus Trophy given to the finest linebacker in the land. 
and they could not push the big fella out of bounds as he ripped down that far sideline over there. I think he stayed in bounds here. Boy, what a great job of reading the quarterback size. Oh, it's close. Uh, at the end, right at the end, it was very close. Inside the five, it was close. <laughs> Here's Pete smiling, having a good time. Here comes Beeler. Packs on another extra point. Trojans have three touchdowns tonight. One of them a defensive variety. You're watching number 58 as he drops back into that zone, stepped in beautifully. And the ball is thrown late, not to mention Todd Beckman stared Brian Hartline down the whole time. Once he threw it late, it gave Maluga plenty of time with his instincts and athletic ability to step right in front of the throw. And then he turns into a halfback. Watch the strength, the shake off Hartline. And then he takes it into the end zone. That a defense, the defense attacked Todd Beckman. Had an insult to injury after the interception. Yeah, he got pummeled, didn't he, down inside the, uh, the five-yard line? <laughs> Off what I've seen, I don't think one man can make no. that big a difference against this team. Uh, this is a very, very good USC football team. Every year it seems like we say this might be the best USC team. Absolutely. And you look at them right now, and it's, it's a team that last year lost 10 players to the NFL and you think well they're going to be down this year <laughs> and the next wave of players steps in and they're able to continue to keep that bar and maybe even raise the bar from where they were in previous years all because of that man I right think, there and uh, they'll go to the house trailing 21 3 and let's go down to Aaron all right coach USC defense putting a lot of pressure on your quarterback what do you do in the second half to stop them? Well, we've got to stop having penalties. I mean, you have touchdowns called back and big plays called back and can't get any consistency when you have penalties. They have a great defensive front. They're putting a lot of pressure. I think our kids are hanging tough. That was a big play at the end of the half for us. Our guys will keep going. Coach, thank you. Lisa, let's send it over to you. Thanks, Aaron. Pete, obviously on offense, you're doing your thing. Let me nitpick a little bit. On defense, Terrell Pryor having some success. What are you seeing yeah, from him? Yeah, we missed a couple calls. We made a couple mistakes on the sidelines. The coaches did. So we'll, we'll get that cleaned up so he doesn't have so much room. All right, thanks, Coach. Two hustling sideline reporters that time. Stay tuned, folks, for the Bud Light Halftime Report. John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie right after this. Mark Sanchez and the USC Trojans lead Ohio State 21 to 3. And uh, Kirk, I guess the question is, uh, if you were Jim Trussell, would you use young Terrell Pryor a little more here in the second half. Yeah, I, I actually said that in the first half and I would say even more now in the second half down by 18 points where you got to be able to put pressure on the USC defense. Time for our Southwest Airlines playbook and uh, Kirk uh, three touchdowns for the Trojans. Yeah it, it's been about the big plays and the explosiveness of the offense from USC. Ohio State's possessed the ball more than 10 minutes in the first half than USC but it's been big plays and of course not just by the offense but Ray Maluga and the SC defense got involved with a big interception return for a touchdown. So explo the, the explosiveness and the big playability from USC dominated the story in the first half. So the second half kickoff. And our Pacific Life game summary looks like this, Kirk. And you, you can see that Ohio State with a not a huge advantage, but five yards advantage of an offense. But because of USC's six plays of 10 yards or more, three of them on the ground, three of them through the air, Joe McKnight's been on display, his big playability. And I look for USC. If you're not familiar with this team, don't expect them to just ride this home and try to work on the clock in the second half. You'll see more of the same and more big playability unless Ohio State's defense makes some adjustments to slow them down. Toss play, and here comes McKnight. McKnight with a big hole. Close to the 35-yard line. Let's check in down below with Lisa. 
Uh, let me correct Brent, that. I, Brent, I had a chance to speak with Jim Haycock coming out of the locker room. He said the most important thing he stressed to his guys coming out, settle down, calm down, because when you panic, you're not executing your assignments. He thought they did a good job of that towards the end of the first half. He said he was happy with the stop there, but that is something they're going to stress throughout the night. Just calm down. Sanchez hands back to the tailback. McKnight bounces. And he's run out of bounds after picking up a yard on that play. Aaron Andrews talking about calming down, and, and she's right when it comes to your mindset and, and getting too worked up. But at the same time, when you play defense, you have to have a, a reckless attitude, and you have to fly to the football. And if it's ever been present for Ohio State in this game, down 21 to 3 with USC getting the ball to start the second half, it's this possession. What happens on this possession for both teams could go a long way in deciding what direction this second half goes. Here comes the blitz off the corner. Second down and eight downfield. And they throw for a first down against Jenkins. Patrick Turner with the reception. A late flag coming in there right at Patrick Turner. It's going to be a face mask on Malcolm Jenkins. So they'll add 15 more yards here to the end of this play. Face mask on the defense number two. A 15 yard penalty. Brent, you and I so love the play, you, you, you and I love CJ Gable. He's he's I think the most complete back. Watch him move to the right. A blitz by the safety. Kirk Coleman picked up perfectly. Allows Sanchez to step into the pocket. And then he's got one on one opportunity with a much larger receiver and Patrick Turner without question. Malcolm Jenkins, the old school, grab a hold of the face mask and pulls down Turner for 15 more yards. First and 10 here, Kirk. Look for USC here to go for the jugular within early downs in this series here. It's McKnight who's. Night. Even though he is stuffed on that play, he's already gained 97 yards on the evening. And Laronitis stops him. When you have such an advantage with field position, and this is a great indication of that, you can see that Ohio State, much of this game has been pinned back deep in their own territory. Head coach Pete Carroll, eighth year here at USC. Second down and 10. Pavili, the fullback. He scored the game's first touchdown. The lead block on the toss play. Here's McKnight picking his way past 100 yards, still on his feet. And showing you why he is one of the more dangerous breakaway threats in the country. Does Joe McKnight think he's playing a video game? I mean, what, what kind of moves are these? This is EA Sports NCAA 2009. A little, what is it, the circle button? A little jump, hop, twist, turn. He's got 11 white jerseys trying to keep up with him. Isn't he the new Reggie Bush, folks? Yeah. Doesn't he remind you just a little bit of, uh, of Bush when he was here with the, uh, the Trojans? Starts to fill out a little bit. He's got great wow. top end speed. That's Johnson going back in motion. Here's a third and two. Straight ahead with Havili. Bounding it for the first down. Wow. Powerful run by Havili. Here's McKnight, Kirk. Uh, he has been all over the field tonight. You mentioned Brent. He's over 100, 100 yards with 105 right now. He's caught the ball. They've motioned him. They just want to continue to move him around to make the defense get into a bit of a guessing game. That's the whole reason you see the movement. And because of his versatility, he not only is a great running back, he can slip out. He has a great feel as a wide receiver. Then they could put him in the lineup together with the other backs like Gable and Stephon Johnson. Stephon Johnson stepping into the middle and he picks up nine more yards. We have a second down and one as we might recall. Stephon mm -hmm. across the 25 yard line and this will be a third down. They need to get to the 14 yard line for a first and 10. Mm -hmm. Something to keep in mind in the second half, we, we talked coming into this broadcast that Ohio State, because of their effort against Florida in the big stage in the championship game two years ago, and then last year against LSU, and now tonight against USC, a lot of fans want to see how Ohio State this year can stack up with the elite teams in college football. They're playing for a lot more here than just trying to get back into this football game in the second half. 
two down linemen on this rush. Sanchez, middle, complete. Touchdown, USC. Strikes with Williams in the middle. The transfer from Arkansas. There is the big difference, as far as I can tell, with this U.S. team this year. They can get the ball down the field, and that's 24 yards on third and 10, and that for Sanchez, his third touchdown pass of the night. And is he off to a great start this season, Kirk, because you go back to that opener, he threw three TDs against Virginia, so he's now got six on the year. And that was a laser. He got back in rhythm, made a perfect read, and was in perfect timing with his favorite target, Damian Williams. Is the route on at the Coliseum? Will the Buckeyes battle back? Will we see more of the young freshmen? Will the yellow flag stop flying? We'll find out. It's a big night for traveling. Trots up and down that field after the uh, after the touchdowns. Uh, you know the Trojans lost to Penn State back in '96, but since then they've gone seven and zero. Well on their way here, and in those eight games they've outscored the Big Ten 296 to 94. Seven-game winning streak against the Big Ten. Juggled at the goal line and Heron out to about the 20-yard line. And let's go back to the score, Kirk. Brent, this, you, you talked a lot about trying to get the ball downfield, and you're going to see that right here from Damian Williams, where he splits a seam right here. And when you split a seam like that, that ball has to be thrown between defenders, and it has to be thrown on a line. Watch Mark Sanchez put this ball on a line, and the timing was perfect with Damian Williams. But you can't hang that ball up in the air. You've got to have the arm strength right there to be able to squeeze it in between the linebacker and the safety. Great throw and a good, great timing there between Sanchez and Williams. Beckman snaps it off into that right flat, picking up about three yards on the play. Williams has his first USC touchdown catch as we check in with Aaron. Brent just standing by the OSU sideline. You know, when the defense came back, despite the fact they've given up 28 points, they got in a very tight huddle. They were all jacked up, getting all over each other. But when the offense was over on the sideline before they headed on the field, it was almost like they were lethargic. No one was sitting by each other. They really looked as almost they were defeated. I mean, no one talked. They were just sitting there by themselves, not saying a word. We'll see what they come up with here on second and six, and it is Sane picks up the first down. And uh, look at how many Trojan defenders were pulling him down, including Brian Cushing. Aaron, I think the reason you're sensing that is because of what this team and this program has been through over the course of the last two or three years. And I think they felt much like they did going into the LSU game last year. This time it's going to be different, and then it wasn't against LSU. And then here they had eight or nine months to get ready. This one's going to be different, and they're down 28-3. to three. I think their tail's between their legs. Youngster in at quarterback. Hands off to Sane, and just short of the line of scrimmage, and guess who's there again? Number 10. He's played a whale of a game, and so Beckman coming back, and uh, there are the Buckeyes, 22 and 2 in the Big Ten, but against the SEC, they've lost two championship games, and it's Notre Dame and the other BCS conferences, 4 and 1. And of course, these two teams might have met a year ago in a Rose Bowl if either Missouri or West Virginia had won in the last week the regular season. They figured that they would have played a second-ranked LSU team, Missouri or West Virginia, and uh, throwing it away with the left hand. There's the penalty flag. That could be intentionally grounding, and Kyle Moore forced that penalty. Intentional grounding, number 17 in the offense. Yep. Finally places the ball at the spot of the path, loss it down, third down. I said since the first half that when Todd Beckman's in the game, USC has no concerns about Ohio State skill. They pin their ears back and they attack Todd Beckman every single time they see him back there. The only thing that slows them down is Mark Sanchez is excited looking up at the video board. The only thing that slows them down is when Terrell Pryor is in the game. Here's Beckman again on third and long. Probably going to see a draw on the screen. But let's see what USC does when they see him back again under center. Steps away, 
Griffin, but he cannot escape the rush by Everson Griffin, the sophomore from Arizona, 93, and he too has a great upside. And Beckman is now starting to feel the pain from this Trojan defense. Right, it's men and boys right now in the trenches between the Ohio State offensive line and USC's defense. They know what's coming. They're able to be aggressive, and again, a tack. Todd Beckman, the Terrell Pryor, who wants to be out on that field helping his team, is becoming frustrated, obviously, with the way the results of this football game have gone so far. New return man for the Trojans. This is Carswell, as McKnight has gone uh, out, balls out of bounds. Now that, Mark Sanchez and the Trojans looking for more, throws in to Havilly. Abili, I should say. Let me get that pronunciation right. And let us check in with uh, with our Lisa down below. Well, Brian, after that last touchdown, Mark Sanchez came to the bench and he went to everyone on offense, each skill player, everyone on the offensive line, and he said the same two sentences: "This ain't it. We are not done." Brent. You know, and Lisa, it, I think the the energy that he has has been talked about a lot. But I, t I said, well, I know he has the energy, but they said the fact he came in with Mal Luga and Brian Cushing, they all want him to succeed. And Gable picks up another first down. You know, we're talking about Mark Sanchez as a starter coming in here, as a starting quarterback. Remember, John David Booney was out in injury. Three and one as a starting quarterback. Lost only to Oregon. There was his first touchdown pass, Havili in. And then off a of play fake, he's got his freshman tight end. And finally, Williams. And that's his first touchdown pass reception as a Trojan he had two uh, Kirk with the Arkansas sat out last year after he transferred of course he came here with the Valley who Mitch Mustaine who was one of the backup quarterbacks for USC the, the game experience that Mark Sanchez was able to receive last year with the injury to John David Booty invaluable for the 2008 season and you're seeing the confidence that he's playing with dropping it off now to Bradford Alan Bradford he's number four on the tailback list and he's got talent he's one of the young men who played the role of Terrell Pryor in practice roughing the pass on the defense number one the 15 yard penalty at the end of the play first down you know, frustration Marcus Freeman yep I'm sorry Brent. frustration setting in on Ohio State's defense Marcus Freeman getting to Sanchez but a second or two late give him a little shove there at the end of the play <laughs> There's the four-string tailback for the fighting uh, or the, for the Trojans, the men of Troy, Alan Bradford. Picks up the ball and he picks up momentum. 230 pounds running downhill. In that red zone after the penalty ball at the 17-yard line. Trojans have been very efficient going in. Steps away, ends a wide open is Williams. His second touchdown catch of the night, and somebody blew that coverage. He was all alone. Getting ugly, folks. Real ugly. Well designed play, Brent. He's on the inside. It's man to man. It's a little bit of a rub route, and it confuses Ohio State. It puts Damian Williams all by himself in the end zone. An easy throw and, and well executed by this Trojan offense. And Kirk, I think you'll see Johnson with a good block pickup mm -hmm. on that as uh, Beeler adds on still another extra point. Let's take another look at this. This is a play it looks like they've been waiting for right here and then right down the end zone. Look at the confusion with the Ohio State secondary. Watch the man to man coverage. Damian Williams moves to the outside. Confusion pressure on Ohio pressure on the quarterback Mark Sanchez. But he had his man all alone. Watch Johnson. In the end zone. Yep. Great block. You're right by Johnson there. Laronitis gets there a little bit late. Are the Trojans really this good. Did they beat much in Virginia Richmond. Gave Virginia trouble. Well, I think you're seeing tonight. This is a pretty, pretty good football team coming out on the 20-yard uh, line. Coach's trophy. They'll give it away in the BCS National Championship game. They'll play that down in Miami, Florida this year. Some representatives of, of that great bowl game are here tonight watching. 
And we'll see how it all unfolds. A lot of snaps. You never know, do you, in this game? And that's Maurice Williams. And he is thrown down by Cushing. So the Astros with a home game in Milwaukee. Maybe a few Cub fans there. And there's uh, Maurice Wells on that pitch out. No, no relation, by the way, those of you who are wondering to the injured Beanie Wells. There's Maurice. Boy, this USC defense, it's like a beating frenzy right now. And they are attacking downhill against the Ohio State offensive line. Now another third down. Let's see if Pete Carroll likes to get pressure with four or bring pressure. He's got Pryor in here this time to try to contain and make him cut up inside the defense. Linebackers hold and Pryor finds an alley but uh, doesn't get much out of it. Kyle Moore. 84 and the thick of things defensively again for the Trojans. Uh, Pryor wanted to throw the football, but it's an outstanding job coming off from the right. Maluga gets picked up by Ballard, but right there, Josh Pinker, 36, forces Terrell Pryor to cut back in to where the rest of the defense is instead of allowing him to use his speed to the outside. He had Hartline wide open, breaking second in that zone outright. The young man's going to learn when oh, yeah, he looks at that say. tape. I'm yeah. telling you right yep. now. That's part of, being a a, part of being a true freshman against this defense. Woo. You're just trying to survive. Well, the third quarter coming to an end. USC dominating. And ESPN Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Folks, I can tell you that Rayford Johnson did not light it this time. Ninth Cauldron. A couple of Olympic games have been here in this Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum, 1932 and 1984. And here, the Trojans dominating another Big Ten team. Fair catch at the 31 by Brandon Carswell, who's back returning punts. And uh, that's where Sanchez will put it back in play. Sanchez has four touchdown passes and one interception. Hey, how are the twins? They still away? They're here. Uh, they're, they're here. Like, now, the one, they now got, the one they got a red eye me, back home. The one twin said to me, Ohio State was going to win it. And uh, so I so I asked his brother. I said, "Now, now, what do you think? Uh, you know what?" what? And he, he said, oh, "I'm not so sure." You know, he was he was not as confident that the Buckeyes could beat these guys. They, <laughs> they, they're huge fans. Cute. They showed up in their jerseys and they're going to hang in there. And they're going to get on the sure. plane and have a long flight home. Yeah, it will be. Ball carrier is Bradford. Pick up. Now we've talked about the Big Ten was not a banner day either for the Pac-10. You look what Oklahoma did. But Oregon did come back in double overtime in Purdue win that game. Maryland, California get a wake-up call about halfway through that game. Oregon State a win. Arizona State uh, not running away from UNLV yet, but look at what BYU did to Ooh. UCLA. I mean, that was huge in that game. Huh? And uh, New Mexico could be uh, beating Arizona today. So, uh, Big Ten, Pac-10, uh, not a real banner weekend as Bradford gets to the 31. Well, in my opinion, and we, we thought that boy, maybe Oregon or maybe Cal, maybe Mark Sanchez's night is done, but we thought maybe who's going to push USC? You always, early in the year, you always want to see somebody push USC because they've just dominated this conference, but I have news for you. If I'm watching this game and I'm in the SEC, I hope people nationally are looking and watching USC and gaining more respect for who they are because they're going to be standing there at the end. <laughs> it's a matter of if they don't self-destruct, who's going to match up with USC in the championship? This is Aaron Cork, a freshman from Villa Park, California, who basically has beat out Mitch Mustaine for the backup job, dropping one off to Bradford, and Bradford breaks out. They are very high on Cork. Cork is 6'4". 195 pounds and that's a 12-yard uh, gain as he looks over to the sideline for Steve Sarkeesian's play. That's why I was wondering Mitch Mustaine who transferred from Arkansas of all the schools to select 
Boy, yep. USC is so deep. But remember, you don't have to start at USC to well, be a starter not, I, in the NFL. Right. Remember that now. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Showing pressure. Bradford patiently to midfield. Well, Jason O'Mara is the modern day NYPD detective Sam Tyler finds himself hurtled back to the tumultuous times of 1973 New York City. He's a right cop in the wrong time. Life on Mars series premiere Thursday October 9th at 10 9 central right after the all new Grey's Anatomy. Coming down toward the final five minutes here. There's Mark Tyler. Wendell Tyler's son is now in as the tailback. Another very Valley Hoop prospect. He's number five on that tailback roster. We've talked a lot about this offensive line, how young they are. They feel that number 70, a true freshman, Tyron Smith, who only weighs 270 pounds coming in as a freshman and eventually will get up to 290, maybe 295 pounds. Look at his build. He will be the next dominant offensive lineman at USC. And as this year rolls on and he gets a little bit more acclimated to this game, you're going to see him not only add depth, but he's going to be pushing for playing time for USC's offense. Is he a good-looking offensive lineman? Yes, he is. Mercy. Corp right on the target, but it was broken up beautifully that time by Coleman. Goodman was the intended target that time for Corp. Sanchez, take that knee brace off. Medical staff will uh, check it. Remember a couple times he came this just. Camera's giving me stage fright. <laughs> he said the camera's giving me a little stage fright. <laughs> Boy, Nick, and uh, they let this one roll. Looks like that. No, didn't quite go out of bounds at the 22 yard line. You're watching Saturday Night Football on ABC. Well, USC with a big one here tonight. And uh, interesting note that Alabama bounced back 41 7. And we had them uh, against Clemson. With a big one, they were a little bit sluggish last week, but but here tonight they turned them loose again down there. <laughs> First down and ten now. Terrell Pryor and Herbie, uh, as we watch him and the pitch out, and it was a beauty. They run the option for nine yards that time. And uh, before we get to my question, uh, the great aerial shots, courtesy of our friends at Outback Steakhouse, proud sponsor of the Outback Bowl, the Bloomin' Onion One Airship, fan favorite every week on ABC, ESPN College Football Broadcast. But look ahead a little bit for me about what this means to specifically the Buckeye offense. Will we see more of Terrell Pryor uh, in the ensuing weeks as they get into conference play, less of Young Beckman, what, what way, what turn do you think this is going to take now? Yeah, he's, uh, they ganged up on him that time. Well, I, I think tonight, Terrell Pryor gave Ohio State a chance to move the football because of his ability to improvise and get outside. It kind of slowed down and neutralized SC, at least in the first half. But as a big picture, I think Jim Tressel will stick with Todd Beckman. I think he'll continue to, to sprinkle in Terrell Pryor, and I think you'll see some kind of combination. I don't know if it'll be every other play, but I think Beckman and Pryor will continue to rotate in. My question is, with so much coming into this year, 20 returning starters off a team that has experienced a lot and also dealt with a lot of depression in those championship games. To lose this game, how does Jim Tressel circle the wagons and get his team back up for the rest of the season? Picks up the fumble and uh, throws a completion for a first and ten. So Terrell Pryor can create plays. That's the one thing he can do and using Ray Small for the first down. He put the ball on the ground, was able to pick it up and create a, a, a first down. That's the one thing that a mobile quarterback can give you is sort of that the busted play look if you, if you like. And, and you haven't seen a lot of it tonight but I've seen him throw the football very very well and the more confidence that he gets in throwing the football in these kind of situations and the more that Jim Trestle has in his ability to throw it would just be a nice compliment to his skill of running. Small again across the 40 yard line. I really think that's the challenge for Jim Trestle. So many veterans so much hope for this game to regain the credibility and what happens 
Looks like a 35 to three loss on that big stage again. Going back to the Midwest with their tail between their legs, embarrassed. Can he re regroup and get them ready to still feel that they can have a successful season and a great year? Yeah, I know they, they have a road trip uh, to Madison coming up and uh, incomplete. Robisky was, uh, was covered. Kevin Thomas was uh, over there. They do have, uh, they get Penn State at home. You've mentioned how you think the Nittany Lions are going to be a, a force in the Big Ten. Uh, Purdue and Penn State are both are both there and then that uh, that tough trip to Wisconsin on October 4th. I think going to Madison will be tough going to Michigan State could be tough going to Illinois to take on the fighting line a team that beat Ohio State a year ago could be tough but the Penn State game in Columbus of course could go a long way in deciding who ends up winning the Big Ten in trouble. I think a broader view and you touched on this earlier is the Big Ten the Big Ten the last two years has been embarrassed when you travel around the country and get outside of the Midwest the Big Ten has kind of become a punchline to people around the country when they talk about how overexposed and overhyped and a bit of a fraud the conference is overall and the team captain of that of course is Ohio State because of the last two national titles and what happens tonight a 35 3 smashing loss to USC this hurts the Big Ten as much as it hurts Ohio State Carswell puts it down and uh, wraps it up on the ground the 14 yard line now the Trojans let's talk about their schedule because I think it's made for a drive to Miami they've got Ohio State here W Oregon Arizona State California were ranked coming into the week California will fall out Washington Notre Dame all here on the road now Oregon State Washington State Arizona Stanford they will be a oh. favorite a big favorite in every one of those road couple games. touchdowns <laughs> easily but, but let's just say this they always have one game in conference play the last three years think about the game Stanford last year when they were supposed to dominate the Cardinal here and lost Oregon State a couple years up at Corvallis and lost UCLA a couple two or three years ago and lost there's all that see the teams in conference seem to play USC obviously much better Better than the non-conference because they're more used to seeing their scheme. Is there a team like that this year who can challenge SC if they have that off week that they again they've had the last three weeks or the last three years? Coaches are starting to celebrate. Final minute. Mitch Mustaine is the mop-up man right now. So you'll take a look at the uh, Arkansas transfer and uh, as I've reported time after time, no one runs a practice quite like Pete Carroll. You would think that he is one of the players and not the coach. He's out there. He's part of the team. He's a quarterback. He works against the linebackers and the defensive backs. He comes downfield during kickoff coverage, kickoff drills, spends a lot of time with the defense. Let Steve Sarkeesian runs that offense. It's, it's far different the way he operates a program than most anybody else were around. And just because he smiles and is coaching out in Southern California doesn't mean that he doesn't have discipline. It doesn't mean that he doesn't do a great job of affecting the people who come through this program. A 32 point victory. 38 total and uh, Jim Trussell has to be a little bit depressed as he heads off to the locker room. There are the two great linebackers. How about that scene right there folks. Wow what a picture. Let's go down to uh, Lisa with uh, with the hero of the evening. Thanks Brent Mark one big play after another. How is your offense able to so thoroughly exploit their defense. Um, you know like you said the big plays really helped us tonight. It was uh, a testament to our offensive line proving it another game in a row. You know they did it at Virginia. They did it at home. Uh, the receivers making big time catches the offensive game plan going into this this matchup. Uh, I felt like we had played this game a million times already. We just had gone over everything in, in our uh, practice uh, regiment and uh, things look great. I mean, it was all clear when you guys got up 28 to 3 you went to your guys and said that ain't it we are not done why was that not enough oh we wanted to uh, this is a dangerous team uh, a highly ranked dangerous team from the Big Ten a tough team and uh, we knew that, that if we let them linger around at 28 to 3 they could come back and, and make this a game I still think we left some plays out there that uh, we weren't 100 percent tonight I, I don't think we fired on all cylinders there's there's a couple plays I want back but uh, the score looks great and we'll take the win thanks a lot congratulations Brent all right Kirk your final thoughts here tonight. you, you got to go all the way back tonight 
1989, the last time Ohio State lost a regular season game this badly. And that score was 42 to 3 to this team right here, USC. So it's about regrouping for Ohio State. And it's about not getting ahead of yourself for USC and trying to make a run to the championship. Fight on. So for Aaron Andrews, Lisa Salters, and Kirk Herb Street, I'm Brent Musburger saying so long for the Los Angeles Coliseum. Thanks for watching ESPN on ABC.